Guest of the week is the talk of the MMA fight world. It is Francis Ngannou, who is favored to defeat Stipe Miocic at UFC 220 this weekend in Boston. He spent a little bit of time at the ESPN campus here during fight week. Francis, what do you think of uh, the ESPN campus? It's just huge. It's like a maze. <laughs> you need a you need a map to walk at the US uh, ESPN campus. Yeah, did they, did they give you a map or at least a tour guide? Someone to take you around? No, I have somebody take me around. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Cuz if you see if I was on ESPN campus and I saw you walking around, I'd be like that guy, he needs someone needs to tell him where to go because I think I'd notice that guy if he if he worked here. I think I'd I'd, I'd recognize him. Yes. <laughs> How has the media been? And, uh, you know, particularly I wanted to ask you about the media in France, because I know you went back. Usually you're out here in Las Vegas, at least in 2017 you were, and then you went to France prior to this fight. Were you doing a lot of interviews out there? Is France have interest in this fight? Yes. I mean, um, <laughs> I thought uh, uh, going to France would... Uh, would um, would save me for some media for some media year, but I I was wrong, I was <laughs> very wrong. Because, really? Yes, because in France now they are in, they are really interesting about what going on there, and then I was really surprised because I was in France um, nine months ago. It wasn't like that, but now all of them do every all of them they want to do something, they want to try. It was too intense. But you know, I was I was happy to see how things going. That mean um, we are getting close to to get MMA uh, in France. It seems like things things works very well. Yeah, were you doing like uh, a lot of a lot of television interviews, or just journalists trying to stop by your gym, or people bugging you on the streets? What, what, how are you feeling at the most? Everything. Really? Yes, everything was more than um, than. He used to. What is the status with uh, MMA in France? What what's bring us up to speed on that? I think with the new with the new government, you know, the new government is a, new, a young government with the young president, with the new minister of sport, and all those things. And um, um, uh, people keep working uh, about UFC to try working about uh, MMA in France. Um, fighter too. So I think all that collect start making a uh, shake because it's been a long time and, uh, on, um, obviously he can't, he can't stay like this, uh, always. He's gonna mm-hmm. change and it seems like he's pretty, pretty close for, we are pretty close for the change. Do you think that's something that you'll be doing in 2018 is maybe meeting with government officials and, and talking to them about why it should be uh, the ban should be lifted in France? Is that something you're going to be involved in or is that, um, you know, obviously you're in no. favor of it, but you're not going to be like actively, you know, pushing for that? No, I think that is a polit- political stuff. So it's not my it's not my stuff. But if there are anything that I can I can do for that, eh, I will do it will be with pleasure. Well, I'm sure winning the title on Saturday can't hurt. Having a French champion in the UFC, that probably helps out the, the discussion in general. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring up to you about an interview that you did in France, and it's sort of been picked up here in the States, is that you, you mentioned you're making half a million dollars for this fight. Is that is that correct? Half a million bucks on Saturday? Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I was talking with a soccer, with soccer player. So, if they need to, um, when they talk money, you you have to talk about something. Mm. And yes, I make half a million. Yeah, what have you made in the past? This seems like it would be a a, a raise for you, obviously, right? What what is like for the Overeem fight? What did you make? Um, you you, you can check it online. Uh, I mean. <laughs> If you uh, that all that question, you should have it. Well, I'm asking I you, Francis. You no, don't I, want to tell I me. Didn't, I didn't. I didn't make a lot. I make around um, around eighty, eighty, eighty gram, eighty six gram. Yeah. Okay. So, so who, who was really small? 
Well, how does it how does it feel to know that you'll be making half a million dollars on Saturday? Do you do you find yourself thinking about that? Obviously, the belt is important. Beating Stipe is, is yes, extremely because, important. Yes, it's important, and I think I deserve it. And that is why I'm gonna have um, have a million. You know, I I beat. You know, when you beat some guy, um, like I beat it over him, and you saw his pay, saw your own, you feel like. Is there? It's not fair, you know. Mm-hmm. So, I think I I deserve more, and I ask more. When you first got into sport, uh, which was only what now four years ago, and and you were considering boxing, but then you know your coaches were talking you into MMA. How much were you thinking about money? Was that was that the driving force that, that said I can make money doing this? Was that really what yes, was uh, behind you getting into this? Of course, I think everything that we do in life driving uh, money with really, because we have to all of us we have to we need the income for whatever we are doing. We need to live with it. And then basically when I leave my family behind me, uh, do, uh, did all this sacrifice because I need a better life. Yes. Of course I'm thinking about money. Don't you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like you, like you mentioned, we, we all do. And, and especially with your backstory and coming from, from France and, and then enduring homelessness and, and, and France, or I'm sorry, coming from Africa and then moving to France, being homeless for, for a little while. It, does it make you emotional when you think about, you know, I, 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 re- I did it. I realized it. I'm making a big, I'm making significant pay on Saturday. Do you get emotional thinking about it or does it seem normal to you now because of all the work that you put in? No, I just think, I just think it's not enough. I just think, uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to do more. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, I, I can do really more. I can. Yes. So. That I think that is, that is the mistake to know step and just start um, being happy for what you 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 did. Okay, mm. uh, it's great, it's good, but does that the, um, the 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 final goal? No, it's not the final goal. Well, I know you're expecting more from yourself, and I know the UFC and the sport itself, the fans are expecting more from you. Um, uh, what is your prediction for the fight on Saturday? You think you've had four first round finishes in a row. You think Stipe is a guy who will stick around a little bit longer. When will this fight end? Uh, my prediction for Saturday is, um, on, on that two round. It's me win on that two round. So, because, um, this fight and other one is, uh, set up for five round. I think, I'm not sure, but I can think that, um, we might use the first round to, to, to check each other, to observe what's going on. You know, Stipe is a smart fighter. He doesn't, he, he doesn't move anyhow. He's checked about any, about every single move before. Mm. So, and, um, I did the same thing. You mentioned earlier um, the knockout against Alistair. Are you ever are you able to even put that into words? What that feels like for someone like who's out there listening to this and has never connected a punch on a human being like that? What does that feel like? Feel like what is what the knockout feel like? That it's, type of knockout, yes. You delivering it. What does it feel like? I don't know what you mean by that type of knock- knockout. It was just one more knockout and I moved forward. Um, the proof I, I took this fight and I'm focused on this fight. Uh, try to see wh- how I'm going to set up this fight, how I can set, I can set up some knockout on this fight. So I will not stay, stay there, be enjoying the old fight. Mm. Okay. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's not talk about the past then. One thing I definitely wanted to ask you about is last year, someone asked you who your dream opponent would be. And you said Brock Lesnar. Now I know that you've, you've, you said this and then you were asked about it, but I want to know why, why Brock Lesnar? Why, why would he be on your mind in 2017 and, and possibly moving forward even in 2018? Um, he'd been on my mind even before 2017, even before, before I'd been in UFC. I saw the guy on TV. I saw how massive. He is, and I was like, uh, if ever I fight this guy, how 
does that look like? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, I think it will it will be a good matchup between two. I mean, we almost we are not almost we are the biggest. Uh, yes, almost the biggest guy in this division, and that matchup is something very exciting. exciting. When you met. When you mention that, has has Dana White ever given a reaction to that, or any UFC official? Have they have they said, "Hey, Francis, that's not a bad idea. Maybe we can I, talk Brock into coming back." I never mentioned that officially for the UFC, and then uh, I know how to mention. I mean, I get I get Stipe right now. That is my main goal. I'm focused on Stipe. After Stipe, I'll move forward and uh, talk about the next one. Yeah, well, we're all looking forward to that fight, Francis. Thank you so much for stopping by. I know you got a busy day on the ESPN campus, so we'll uh, let you move on to the next one. And we'll see you in Boston, man. Really looking forward to the fight. Best of luck on Saturday. Okay, thank you, Brad.